tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. Services were announced today for the Nassau County police officer killed by friendly fire over the weekend. 40-year-old officer Jeffrey Breitkopf was fatally shot by another officer after a confrontation with a knife-wielding man inside a home in Massapequa Park Saturday night. 21-year-old suspect Anthony DiGeronimo had barricaded himself in his family's home and was shot and killed after police say he charged officers with the knife. Additional officers responded to the scene, and that's when a Metropolitan Transportation Authority officer reportedly shot Breitkopf. Reports say it's unlikely the MTA officer will be charged. Services will be held Thursday at the Selden Fire Department with funeral following on Friday at St. Margaret's of Scotland in Selden. A New York State Supreme Court judge today upheld the constitutionality of NIFA's takeover of Nassau County's finances. The state fiscal watchdog, NIFA, announced its takeover back in January, arguing that the county's budget was out of balance by more than allowed by the state. But the county says the budget is balanced and challenged NIFA's decision in court. Today's decision denied the county's effort to block the NIFA takeover of county finances, ruling that the decision is constitutional and was issued within proper time periods. The judge put off a decision on whether NIFA's decision was arbitrary and capricious, seeking further comment from both sides. A Long Island man has been charged with threatening a store clerk who police say asked the man to move aside so he could put items away. The incident happened last evening at the Walmart in Valley Stream. Police say when the clerk asked 23-year-old Joseph Giordano and his family to step aside from where he was working, Giordano became enraged and threatened the clerk by displaying what appeared to be a handgun in his waistband and telling the clerk he'd be waiting for him outside. According to detectives, no gun was recovered and no injuries were reported. Giordano of Franklin Square has been charged with menacing. A 15th victim died today from injuries suffered in this past weekend's fatal tour bus crash on a Bronx highway. Police say a 70-year-old man died from his injuries at about 7.30 this morning. Several injured passengers remain hospitalized today, most in critical condition. It's reported the bus slid into a sign pole that sheared it end to end. The National Transportation Safety Board initially said cameras faced passengers, but later determined the camera was pointed outside the bus. It is also examining an engine control module that may indicate just how fast the bus was going on its return trip from Mohegan Sun. A South Texas high school basketball player has died after collapsing at a tournament in Austin. His coach says the 16-year-old collapsed Saturday during a timeout after giving a teammate a high five. Earlier this month, Michigan high schooler Wes Leonard died of a heart-related issue after scoring the winning basket in the team's regular season finale. And last week, a female athlete collapsed during track practice at a Florida high school and died. Well, reports like these of young people dying while exercising or playing sports has many parents worried, as Jody Goldberg reports. Long Island 7th grader Lauren Gruber of Syosset is getting a hospital checkup to make sure she's in good health to run track. Her mother says Lauren loves to run, but she doesn't want the sport to put her daughter's life at risk. You know, she really puts her heart and soul into everything, so... That's what makes me nervous, that she's pushing herself so hard that she doesn't realize that something hurts or that something's not normal. So that's why I know now that she's fine and she can do that. Lauren's mother says she became concerned when she heard about the sudden death of Michigan high schooler Wes Leonard, who died of an enlarged heart right after helping his basketball team win a big game in the last seconds. 
High school athletes generally push themselves very hard. So you've got a maturing heart that's susceptible to the congenital issues that can come up, plus a kid that's pushing beyond his limits. It's the age where things can happen. But Dr. Levchuk says many young athletes are often reluctant to admit when they're not feeling well for fear they may end up on the bench. So instead they withhold information from their doctors or just lie. While playing sports is an important part of students' lives, Dr. Levchuk says one in 200,000 adolescents are at risk for sudden cardiac death. And this number is alarming if you're not proactive. <laughs> Here at Jericho High School, athletic director John Mankiewicz says he wants parents to stay aware of their child's physical condition and any problems they may have so they don't turn into tragedy while competing. You know, I would want to know, you know, at an early age if my child had any type of complications and if I were putting them at risk by having them uh, participate in any type of physical activity. So parents are urged to make sure their kids aren't hiding or unaware of any health problems that could put their lives at risk when they're out competing in sports. In Jericho, Jody Goldberg, LI News Tonight. Well, it was a down day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished the day down 51 and a quarter points. NASDAQ was down 14 and two thirds points. And the S&P was down almost eight points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. See a screening of the film The Red Shoes at New York Institute of Technology's Dzeversky Center in Old Westbury on Wednesday, March 16th at 5.30 p.m. For more information, call 516-686-7567. Celebrate St. Patrick's Day at the Ward Melville Heritage Organization in Stony Brook on Wednesday, March 16th at 5.30 p.m. For more information, call 631-689-5888. Spend a day at the beach planting seagrass to help stabilize the dunes at Tobey Beach in Massapequa on Saturday. Saturday, March 19th at 10 a.m. For more information, call 516-677-5748 or learn how to use Google Earth to research your family history at Brentwood Public Library on Saturday, March 19th at 10 a.m. For more information, call 631-273-7883. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. In Melville, J.B. Buno, L.I. News Tonight. In Beth Page, Stephen Katov, L.I. News Tonight. At Belmont Park, Sophia Allen, L.I. News Tonight. These are just a few of the people who have been reporting the news for L.I. News Tonight over the past year. And you could be one of them. Television news is an exciting and challenging career that could put you in the middle of what's happening and in touch with the people who are making the news. A career in television news journalism can offer you the opportunity to work as a reporter, camera person, or videotape editor, or any number of behind-the-scenes jobs, including producing or manning the assignment desk. And it's a career that can be yours by joining the LI News Tonight news team. Produced at studios on the campus of the New York Institute of Technology, LI News Tonight offers television news internships that can earn you college credits and the possibility of being on the air in just a few weeks. LI News Tonight has been the jumping off point for many local and national news professionals, and you could be next. Call 516-686-7952 for more information on how to enroll for LI News Tonight, and let us put you on the air. Some top headlines around the world today. Japan says the nuclear fuel rods appear to be melting inside all three of the most troubled nuclear reactors damaged in last week's earthquake. Officials say the fuel rods in one reactor were fully exposed after it lost its ability to cool down. Earlier today, a hydrogen explosion at another reactor at the same plant sent a massive cloud of smoke into the air. And on Saturday, a third nuclear reactor at the plant exploded, causing mass evacuations. The U.S. says it moved several Navy ships away after detecting radiation on helicopter crew members helping in the relief efforts. Officials had to figure out how to continue safely after airborne radiation was detected yesterday by a U.S. carrier. Meanwhile, Japanese police say a thousand bodies washed up on shore 
and were found scattered today along the coastline. One province estimates more than 10,000 people may have died. European nations are reevaluating their nuclear power plants as they watch the crisis continue to unfold in Japan. Germany's government is temporarily putting on hold its plans to extend the life of the country's nuclear power plants. Last year, German leaders had pushed through a decision to extend the life of the country's 17 nuclear power stations by an average 12 years. Earlier, it had been decided to shut them all by 2021. Neighboring Switzerland is suspending its plans to build and replace nuclear plants. And Austrian officials are urging atomic stress tests to make sure that Europe's nuclear facilities are earthquake proof. Authorities in India say they will check the licenses of all airline pilots operating in India after at least four of them were found to be flying aircraft using fake documents. India's top aviation official says two were arrested for using fake certificates to gain licenses, including a pilot with national carrier Air India, who falsified his qualifications. The other two pilots are still being investigated. The official says the licenses and documents of 4,000 pilots will be checked. He says the second pilot was arrested last week after damaging an aircraft while landing and a scrutiny of her papers showed that she had used fake documents to get a license. Well, you don't have to be Irish to enjoy corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day, especially if it's served with a little twist. We spoke with a chef at New York Institute of Technology about what could be done to make this meal even more special. And while we've aired this story before, his advice was so good we thought we'd share it with you again. Rob Hahn has the story. Corned beef and cabbage is back this month. The traditional dish, which was originally served on Easter Sunday in rural Ireland, is now enjoyed by many on the principal feast day of Ireland, St. Patrick's Day. Brian Hoos, a 2000 graduate of the culinary arts program at the New York Institute of Technology and current executive chef on the old Westbury campus, was in the kitchen where we asked, what's cooking? Uh, it's traditionally corned beef and cabbage. We did a little spin on it. We did the traditional corned beef, but we did a Guinness braised uh, cabbage, which is uh, sautéed with little bacon and onions, then we braise it with the Guinness. And then instead of a, just a regular boiled potato, we made a rizzled potato, which is white potatoes that are roasted whole. Then we take them out and we season them with a little salt, pepper, dash of garlic, and some parsley for the green color for St. Patrick's Day. And of course, no dinner served on March 17th would be complete without Irish soda bread, the sweet treat that dates back to the mid-19th century. There is nothing quite like the traditional Irish meal of corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day. But any experienced chef will tell you there are certain mistakes to avoid during preparation. Start the corned beef early. It takes about four hours to cook. And the other key is to cut against the grain, not with the grain, so it doesn't shred into pieces. When asked for the perfect beverage to go with his meal, Hoos did not hesitate. Uh, definitely a pint. A pint of Guinness or a uh, harp. Definitely. In all Westbury, Rob Hahn, LI News Tonight. A Long Island mother has been charged with a felony for allegedly driving drunk with her four-month-old baby in the car with her. Suffolk County police say 32-year-old Tina Fitzpatrick of Islip was driving on 47th Street in Islip early Saturday morning when she crashed into a pole. When police got there, they say they determined Fitzpatrick was intoxicated and placed her under arrest. Fitzpatrick was treated for minor injuries. Her four-month-old son was unharmed, and he was turned over to a family member. Fitzpatrick's DWI charge is considered a felony under Leandra's law. We had a partly cloudy day today. The high was in the upper 40s. Tonight should be partly cloudy with a low down into the mid-30s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, a high in the upper 40s. Wednesday, rain expected with a high in the low 50s. Thursday, mostly sunny, a high in the upper 50s. And the outlook for Friday, chance of a few showers with a high in the low 60s. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.